welcome to CCN News Talk. I have a whole platform full of wonderful folks, and we're going to be talking this evening to our Illinois State Rep, LaShawn Ford. Now, I'm sure he's going to call in, but until he does, we wanted to talk about with him this executive order that he proposed to the governor and to find out what kind of a response he's gotten from the governor. What's about, in the executive order, Wanda? What is the executive order? What's in it? What it is, uh, he had put together like a task force. Yeah. And that task force would kind of like oversee that uh, he's asking the governor for a billion dollars. So he put a, a task force together of different individuals who do uh, chambers of commerce, uh, family commissions, technology, and chambers of commerce, uh, 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 different community leaders across the city. That if once we get this money, then we'll have the opportunity to uh, go after this money, the same concept, I guess I'm thinking the way the SBA do it, yes. but then it's based on the guidelines that we as a race of a people will ask for it. And, you, and, and it's kind of right that he's asking for it because the capital people then got 1.4 billion. Yeah. The Mexican can got 300 million. It's like, we as a race of the people never really got anything. And even though they did that PPE money, a lot of black businesses didn't get it. That's so they didn't apply JB for it. A lot of black businesses didn't apply for it. You're right. They did, no, no, some no, of them applied no. for it and some of them applied for it and they didn't get the technical assistance that they needed to kind of help them. And oh. then they had one question on there that said, do you make over $80,000? So we was like, why would they let something like, we called uh, Senator Jackie Collins and said, why would y'all let something like that be in the legislature? Well, you know, a lot of these small businesses only make 30,000, 40,000 a year. Right. So once you say that you didn't make 80,000, a lot of them got kicked out of the system. Oh, that's and true. then there was another lady on there who was saying that it's a lot of black businesses that apply be because S is the SBA, they was accepting so many applications, they literally had to shut it down just to let black businesses get their applications in. Okay. So black people were trying. We just had the uh, state rep to join us. Good evening. How are you, state rep? Very good. How are you? I'm doing fine. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. We all are looking forward to talking with you about that executive order. Well, I appreciate the opportunity to speak on it. Oh, please, please just give us some clarity. We were trying to discuss amongst ourselves what it was all about and how it's going to impact the African-American community. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> good evening. It's a direct um, demand from the governor to use his executive powers to spend federal CARES Act money. Okay. As well as budget money and capital money on black communities. All right. But, and it, when you hear the governor talk about his executive orders, we know that when he does executive orders, he takes all the power away from the legislature and he has the power to do what he sees fit for. Okay. And so that's our goal is to um, ask the governor to use CARES Act money and um, uh, regular budget money for the black communities. I mean, it's been proven that the black community has been the hardest hit by COVID. Right. More, uh, more black people have died of COVID. Yes. Um, you know, more black people have contracted it, but live with it and still have the adverse effects. Yes, they do. The housing uh, during COVID because of the unemployment, people are behind in their rent. They're behind in their mortgage. Um, and black businesses are struggling. So, I mean, the governor has said that it's very, um, it's the job of government government to go where the herd is. Okay. I mean, you know, look at the carjacking in our neighborhood, carjackings in our neighborhood. Oh, it's terrible. It is it's terrible. terrible. That's an indicator that there's something wrong and that we need to pay close attention to mm -hmm. um, the problems in the black community. Absolutely. I mean, I get about three or four carjackings every day from the what? Chicago Police Department. Uh, they're, they're do that has become a, an everyday activity. I mean, so what, what's the governor's response to that? Yes, what is it? Has, have you heard anything? No, I mean, no response. The only thing that I hear is that the people want to create more 
tougher crimes and penalties for carjackers. Yeah. I mean, of course, people have to be punished, but there is no doubt there are problems with those teenagers. We know okay. drugs are prevalent in our neighborhoods. They're popping these pills <clears throat> and they're they're unemployed. They don't have jobs. Right. So my mother's all my mother always said I don't mind is the devil's workshop. That, that's so true. That's you know, so, true. so I mean the governor should respond with the executive order where he's going to come up with a strategy and bring the community together, stakeholders together to talk about how we could work across the state to um, help black people in the state. Okay, the floor is open, ladies so, and gentlemen. You have so the state. My right. question is, uh -huh. um, Representative Ford, so does the Black Caucus support this executive order? Um, we, we passed part of the executive order. The executive order called for a, um, Office of Equity and Inclusion, that was a part of our pillars and the executive order calls for that. So yes, they support that part. I have not gotten a lot of support from the Black Caucus on the executive order demanding the governor to um, pay close attention to black people. That's what I'm talking about, yeah. That's yeah. the one I'm, I'm, I'm mostly concerned with. Yeah. So in, in the caucus, have you discussed it with each member I've discussed it with each member. I don't know about individually, but each member I made sure that they had a copy of it. Okay. But I think when the people start speaking, it's going to make all the difference. You think we ought to start some kind of letter writing campaign or something? Yes. I mean, I think that we need to lay out um, all the reasons why the governor should um, deal with the problems in the black community. We've just named them. I mean, I don't know about you all, but I know people in my own family that's on house arrest. Right. Young people. I know people in my own family that have died of overdose. Yeah. And that have overdosed but may not have been fatal. That means this drug um, problem in our neighborhoods, you know, is rapid. Yeah. You know, why are why do white people got to come to the black community to buy heroin? Thank you. <laughs> you know, so what, what are we going to do about that? What about the guns? How, why 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 is it so easy? to get illegal guns in our neighborhood? That is a question. Okay, wait, wait, stop asking the same old question. You get those guns because they let them come in. Yeah. That's the bottom line. However, as we talked about last year, in order to do what you're trying to do, wouldn't it be a, a smart way to do like we did years ago when you solicit the community to buy into what you're talking about. So that means across the board, you would need politicians, you need community organizations, you need people on the street. That's you right. need everybody to join in. So the effort becomes the outreach. If we're if you're truly serious, not just writing something, but there's a campaign that generally goes with that. Well, you know, I started this campaign on Juneteenth. This is not overnight. I started this June first I've heard of it. First I've heard, and I work here in Springfield. It's so good. I'm saying, it's good. And I'm saying, if it, and I'm saying we need to do better in the campaign. That That's means right. every black community in every little county in, in, in Illinois needs to know about this so that, again, that write-in campaign, that, that um, call campaign begins to start. And I mean groups, just yeah. as in elect, in, when we... Uh, when somebody runs for an office, you call people that are in business, you call non for profits, you call churches. You, so that's the effort that needs to be going on. NAACPs across Illinois right. should be buying into this. Okay. So it's not a one man show, but everybody in the state that has a state can be a part of it. We well, got I will tell you, let me tell you where, where, how did you hear about it? That way I could find just out tonight. How? Oh, you just heard. So we have a group of people that's been calling every legislator. There is a petition. We have been working it. I will let you, I will make sure that you get a copy of it. And there has been a petition going on since the 9th, Juneteenth on this. So and how many signatures do you have on that petition? If we've been going since June, 
Well, let's just find out. This is good that we're talking. I mean, but this is, I mean, I didn't even, I don't even know who's on the call. So well, let's say, but, okay, everybody introduce yourself. Start with you, Anthony. This is the tax doctor. How hey, you doing, Ralph? Hey, hey. All right, and then we have Miss Levette. Levette? Hello, Representative LaShawn Ford. I am Levette Haynes. I'm at over at the Gold Dome, uh, Westside Cultural Arts Council. We're arts partner. You've been to my events, and you've been maybe one of the only ones that came out when I invited you, and glad to be in your presence tonight. Thank you. And then I we love have Ms. Cheryl place. Blackman. Thank you. And we have TJ. TJ, introduce yourself to the state rep. Hello, Assemblyman or Representative uh, Ford. Um, I'm uh, TJ Daniels. I attend uh, Dr. Martin Luther King uh, College Preparatory High School. I am also the chairman of the Student Run Business and Company uh, Commission. Um, that is to uh, advocate for the rights of uh, student CEOs within my school. Um, my school is predominantly black, so that is um, advancing the placement of black individuals within my school, which is an all black school or predominantly black school. Um, I appreciate that I have the ability to be here tonight, and uh, I hope to find out a lot of. I'm a former resident of West Garfield community, um, but been here for over 20 years in Springfield. We miss you. I ain't gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, can I ask, is everybody introduced yet, Wanda? Uh, we, okay. Got yeah, one more, Grady Norwood. Grady, where are you at, Grady? Grady. Grady Norwood Jr. Yes, sir, I'm on. All right. Uh, Thomas, say, you say you've been down there 20 years. It's been that long. Plus, plus Grady, you know you came with me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. Uh, well, before, okay. before, before, um, Grady asked any questions. Let me open up with this. Right. Uh, when the Black Caucus members was over on the west side, that's when Representative Ford was out there with the governor, and the governor made the statement that he uh, he felt our pain. So if you feel our pain, then governor give up the money. Yes. Don't just right. you, don't just That's tell right. us you feel our pain and you give the Hispanics 300 million. Yeah. Oh, but but That's wait a minute, y'all. Hold on. Hold on. <clears throat> hold on. What we do is expect them to give to us. We yes. don't continue to fight. You get two or three in the room and you say, ah, we got this, man. We got this. The fight don't never stop. But we know that. And, and stop letting one person drag the buggy and think you got it out, we still be in duped. And I'm, you know. Well, I agree with you. It's sad. Can so Representative, can I, Representative can Ford, to going thing. back to what we said, it's important that groups begin to, to stand for this. That's how the Hispanics get it. Every time that Senator Sandoval would go into a committee hearing, he would say, how many Hispanics work in your department? Oh, how many Hispanics don't, don't got worry, a job? Don't worry, Black people do that too. Black legislators. I'm not disagreeing. But I'm saying they is, follow but, up well, and they no, make sure that no, things happen. Let me just tell you, Thomas. It's not, we have to work together as a I community. Agree. And that means I agree. that people like the tax doctor, he, he has not let up. He's relentless on his efforts to deal with taxes. There's, if anybody, the governor knows him for that. And so we have to work together. All I'm saying is we can't leave it up to um, the legislators. I agree. We We're saying the same thing. That's all I'm saying. We're saying the same thing. And, uh, Again, as we said, the more the merrier, the more people are involved, the more people listen. Right. The squeaky wheel is the one that get the, uh, the, 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 the oil. As we said last week, and we have to continue saying every week, it takes all of us together to accomplish the goals that we need. It can't be a group over here and then you quiet, you tired. Keep it on, Keep, pass it on like a chain and, letter. And can I add, uh, I agree that we have to, um, instead of uh, individualizing the groups of minorities, we have to look at each other as, okay, we are minorities as a whole. 
we're minorities up against the majority. The majority are, is the white community. The white community, which has been in control for quite a substantial amount of time. And I'm not saying that we have to eradicate the white community, but we have to equally separate the power amongst the communities. And I'm not saying that we have to melt into a melting pot because the melting pot is completely and totally ineffective. However, we must um, do our research. Like um, Representative Ford, I understand that on the 14th of January, you actually introduced into the uh, General Assembly for, floor um, uh, House Resolution 13. And just as of yesterday, you uh, officially added a co-sponsor, Representative Smith. Um, and I'd just like to ask you, what exactly would your uh, commission uh, do to advance the placement of black men? Because black men, um, and if you were looking at it, looking at it um, from a scale basis, black men are at the bottom, and then there's black women, women, and then there's white women, and then there's white men, and yes. and other minorities um, fall into line yes. into the place somewhere along those lines. So TJ, <clears throat> that's very good that you follow follow the um, legislation. And what he's talking about is we have already established a commission on the status of black males. <clears throat> that commission has already established what the uh, HR 13 is doing is extending it and it's expanding it. We're going to have a press conference at the DuSable Museum on this Friday to announce the work of the Commission on the Status of Black Males. I welcome everyone. It'll be at 10 o'clock a.m. at the um, Desabo Museum. I'll put the commission in the chat. I've already put the petition in the chat for everyone that um, would like to sign it. And now this, uh, what TJ is talking about, the commission for uh, the stat social status of black males is also there. Thank you. And I just have a follow-up um, because I am speaking on behalf of um, of students who have questions. Would this uh, commission focus on introducing male students into the reality of earth that we now live in, where from a young age, even in high school, black males have a target slapped on their back? Um, and if so, how will your commission or this commission as a whole take a, um, a general approach to introducing it to the lives of students? How would students uh, come into this information? Yeah, so the, the students are a part of the commission for one, and we will have access to, um, we'll be working with the state um, board of education, we'll be working with the Department of Human Services, we'll be working with the Department of um, Juvenile Justice. So we'll work with all the state agencies and the school districts, the universities. I'm the chair of the, um, Higher Ed Appropriations Committee. So we will be going to the universities. We'll be doing our tours everywhere to reach the um, black males in our society. That's a wonderful thing. It's that you really know. good. TJ, where do you live? Well, I actually live in Chicago. Um, I have all my life. And um, I actually plan on being in Chicago uh, to receive further education because Chicago is one of the most uh, politically diverse cities. If you look at it, we may all consider ourselves Democrats, but we're Democrats on different branch of uh, democr uh, the Democratic uh, Party. Yes, everybody ha we, we everybody have their own views and beliefs. So, <clears throat> what what? How old are you? Fifteen. Uh, I'll be sixteen. Um, at the end of this year. <laughs> That's, That's great. Right. LaShawn, I think you should uh, register him for that program. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> he's a good probably, leader. Yes. I mean, you probably can't be at the Sabo um, on Friday because you have class. Is that right? Uh, on this coming this coming Friday, I believe um, that is professional development day for uh, CPS. So we are out of school that day. Are you on the south side? Yes, I am. You should come. That let me um you should come to the the Sabo Museum. Let me give you the exact um you know where the Sabo is? I do. And the exact time for this press conference, Congressman Davis is a part of this. The mayor of uh, Aurora, you may have seen him on the news tonight. 
um, talking about helping young people with jobs out in Aurora. He's also on it. We have um, Brandon Johnson on it. We have Commissioner Deer on it. And we have some high school and we are expanding it to college students. So you um, should come. Now, let me get this. Um, it's at 10 o'clock at DuSable Museum. And so how many other members of the caucus are going to be there? Um, of the commission, I think most of the members of the commission, it's, um, this is a separate commission that's set up and, um, there's only Nick Smith is a member of the, um, commission. Um, LG is not a member. LG is not a member. Um, Marcus Evans. No. Omar. No, only Nick Smith is is the only black um, uh, male legislator beside me. It's an initiative that I did, and we only could have two members from the House. It wasn't a Senate initiative, so it's only House members, and I, and it's only um, Nick Smith and myself. How many are participating? Oh, it's going to be, um, we have people from across the uh, state, so, um, we have a psychologist, we have Congressman Davis, we have Mayor Irvin, we have two Republicans. Um, I don't know if you guys know Aaron Mallory, he's been supporting it, which is great. I mean, they have taken over. I mean, they have taken over and that's what it's about. <clears throat> you know, I've been working with Pastor Anthony on this all summer long. Mm -hmm. And And so, how, uh, because Wanda and I have been discussing it and trying to digest it and see where uh, we would fit in. Uh, and, and I think what Thomas A was saying is that it has to be a theme. It has to be a campaign. It has to be a language that everyone can stay in a unified voice. And so as we unify our voice in the various causes that we are attempting to uh, make policy through uh, putting it before the governor. My question to you is, all too often when these uh, policies are passed and funding is associated with it, then all of a sudden their stipulations and about time it gets to Chicago, there's uh, you there's com ed bills attached to it, uh, uh, parking tickets attached to it. And so how do we circumvent those things? Because if the city is uh, uh, requesting funds, the federal government is not going to say, well, you're in debt and you can't get these federal funds. So how is it that the city is allowed to put that stipulation on residents uh, to stop them from being funded because they owe parking tickets? Yeah. So, I mean, that's the statutes in the city um, code that if you owe money, <coughs> you can't, if you owe money to the city, you can't run for public office in the city. If you owe money to the city, they're not going to, um, they're not going to allow you to get grants. Um, one, you would say, well, why don't they just take the grant money off the top and take the fines off the top? And I've worked on that, but the fact is you can't use the grant money to pay a fine. So. Now, what about, what about directing those funds directly to organizations? Why does it have to come filter through the city? For them to then get administrative always, dollars off of it, it doesn't happen like that. When that happens, there's something else going on. Generally, it's earmarked. If it's not in the budget, that's first and foremost. If it's not in the budget, they can play with the money. So if they say something else, mm -hmm. then they can change it whenever they want to. But if it's it earmarked changes. in the budget, generally that's how you get your funding. It'll it say five forty one section two, you know, whatever the section mm -hmm. it is. We also okay. have to look at the fact I, and I, that- uh, And I only said that because I know a lot of artists and for the art grants, it just stops them at the door when they uh, attach these stipulations when the dollars are coming from the federal government. So I know, I, you know, if it's generated from the city level, that's one thing, but, you know, coming from the federal government, 
then no, Kim, uh, you know, also, it's just uh, like Cheryl was saying. Cheryl was saying earlier how they put a eighty thousand dollar cap on the uh, funding uh, that that came uh, from the federal government for the CARES Act or something to that effect. And okay. can I add um, sure. one one thing that we also have to consider is. Um, when, when funds are allocated or appropriated uh, directly to um, foundations, we have to consider the fact that there are so many individual um, and varying in size foundations that could qualify for this grant. And city, it's the city's job to um, determine how many, how much of the funds that they've been appropriated will go to this certain foundation due to uh, membership. And the state has so many other things to worry about because they have so many counties or cities or municipalities to allocate these funds to that you can't worry about oh, larger cities because then that becomes a problem. TJ, check your mic. It sounds like uh, you have two mics on in your room. Oh, no, I, I hear it, but I don't know where that came from because I, okay. I didn't start off that way. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. Stay rep for it. I was on, uh, it was the summertime and I was on a, a Zoom call and I think it was Senator Jackie Collins and the state representative that's in that area. I forgot the gentleman's name. And I think they were even over the banking part or the money part or something. And as different individuals, Melinda Kelly, it was a lady who do the SBA uh, calls for the black banks and stuff like that. So they were on a call talking about trying to help the small businesses uh, apply for these different grants for them and one of the questions came up was why would uh they allow that as the uh, small banks the small business people were filling out the applications on the computer and one of the question was have your business made over eighty thousand dollars so when the individual said no i didn't make eighty thousand dollars then from there they was cut off and they wasn't able to go into the uh no further along in the application so a lot of people that were on that Zoom were saying, why would the legislators allow something like that to pass? So that was a statement that was made, you know, on, on that Zoom call. So that's why I kind of kind of like got that information from. Was that federal? Yes. Yeah. State has nothing to do with federal. Right. Okay. Well, that's two different, the, it was just, two different it, it, governments. Two different yeah, so it's, it's the congressman's and stuff to have to do it, but I, for some reason they was addressing it to State Senator Collins then, and I know that goes to uh, Bobby and to Danny now. Yeah. So, but I know that, that part of that concept came. That was just an excuse. People got the businesses in every district. Businesses got money. Well, let me in just every, interject. Let me interject because. I was following the statistics of the PPP, the PPE money, and black people were the last ones to get it. Now, how did that happen? When I looked at the entire nation, most of the Republican states got the funds first. So we've been disenfranchised racism still right, right, right. Exists. <laughs> right and i and i understand and so what i'm saying sometimes we can say well you know well black people did get it or uh we got to be in the melting the pot but he so, will get the oil and, and and listen but you know what that's true but when you have a systemic situation that is not in your favor we have to work harder yes now i just want to interject to the to the uh state rep that i understand how we have to approach this because we're working on the restoration of garfield park right now and we're listing every partner that you're listed on that list as well uh representative but we're listing every partner that we're going to reach out to to come to the table because we want to make sure that everyone understands the part that they're gonna play. And so in our one voice, as we reach the governor, I think that if you continue to share with us the things that we need to get behind, then we are separate. We are sort of spread out. And through uh, the Chicago community news media, we can be unified 
where we continue to get this information because Wanda is the reason that I'm at this table now. And as she's been reaching out, we've been reaching out to just understand where we are politically because it's, it's so volatile right now until you don't know what is what and, 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 and why is why. So if we can understand what it is that we have to get behind, what it is that we have to write as the demand, and uh, then we have to be willing to do that because that's what we are in our process of, res of restoring Garfield Park. Yeah, well, I think that um, it speaks for itself when you look at the, um, <clears throat> when you look at the, um, the actual press paper, what, what I've sent in the link. If you all saw the link, you will see what we need to start pushing. Okay. Right. Also, also, I put up on the screen the governor's phone number in Springfield and in Chicago. Now, what was so interesting, I was having some problems getting in con contact with the governor's office. So the Sean and I was on the phone when I called the governor's office <laughs> and asked them to support this resolution. Yes, and that's right. We did that. And we need more people to also make phone calls. Yep. Yeah. Well, we, we will make those phone we calls. We got to do everything. We got to do a round robin. And I think we should know. What no, I'm not that. That's illegal. <laughs> what is illegal? Round well, robin. robin. Round well, <laughs> robin is illegal. I think we should know how many people have signed the petitions. Um, then that gives us an incentive to know, you know, where we are in the game. And well, so we don't have that enough. We don't have enough signatures. I mean, we, we don't have enough. Because the, because really the bungles <laughs> ain't bonging. We got right. if exactly. you want something to happen, you got to bung the bungles. Right, right. So and, 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 and let's do a strategic uh, uh, outreach. You know how what what it is that uh, you know I have a network of people. Wanda, I'm quite sure. Thomas, say how many do you need? That's a you know we need to know the hows and the whys. You know what what target what what's the target number that that we're, as he said he don't know he gave everything to this. Wait group. wait wait as I right? said I don't Did know you what say that? I know. What you, you mean, said I don't know. wait 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 I said well you just said we just asked you how many you said you didn't know and then that you just that said that wasn't what you said. She didn't okay. say, she said targets. Now, now we can always get numbers, but I mean, right now I wasn't, I didn't know why I was on, so I could get the numbers. It's not a problem with getting the numbers. She said that we need to start targeting. And I agree. I agree, I agree with right. that, yes. That you didn't say that nothing about the numbers. We we could get numbers. That's we not did. I, I, I personally asked right you how many people were on the petition. And I don't However, know. That. He's, a, he's, he's, he's no debate. No, because he didn't have. He didn't know he'd have to bring that information. No problem. So, well, I mean, I just got a call at, like thirty minutes ago about. It's okay. Call. I'm not. I'm not. And, <laughs> listen, and we appreciate you because uh, we you didn't have to. So, right. but but I think that you are dealing with a group that is ready and willing. And found to know. zone ready. And that's all I want to hear. Ready. We have something to work with, all and right. that's all. We don't have to worry about. What ain't been done, all we know is there are a segment of people working right now. We got a new segment that's across the state. Let's just kick in. Yeah. Let's kick in. We ready. And I think Party. that we are about to, this COVID is, look, foreclosures, evictions, um, the education of our kids, all of this is getting ready to be a problem. Yeah. If black people don't stick up right now, Right. Well, that part is true. Yes. You yes. know, and then we got a Democrat president, a black vice president, a full Democrat. But if you don't president. stand up and say what you need, you're not going to get so it. This is our moment. I, I, agree. No exactly. I, agree. I feel I feel good. Now, can I just say those kids? I, I know this is started off with the carjacking right in the beginning, but I track those kids from the summertime. When Dart announced that all of those kids were going to come out on the street, I wondered. He, I, I first heard a number of 4,000. So no one ever said exactly what that number wound up being. But in my spirit, I said, there's no resources. 
these kids are coming out uh, on prescription drugs. Then they're being introduced to more pharmaceuticals on the street. There's no house. Uh, 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 evidently, if they're in incarcerated, they it was already problems at their household. So now we have a multiplicity of problems that is beyond because we're our still control. Doing, so oh. we need to we need to see what the Bobby Wright Mental Health Center is doing. Find out if there's any mental health funding or resources through the CARES Act. We need to put it's more money. men it's out money. on the street and not it's just money. put them out there in harm's way. We need to find out the funding that's associated with it so we can put our it's own money. The best. It's money. There yeah, is there's money. There's money. She's we absolutely right. It. We're going to agree on that. And I, and I think we need to ask the no money. And I think we need to ask the question, uh, what is our plan? Because if you don't have a plan and you don't have it on What's paper, the caucus plan? If the Black Caucus is the leader of the state, what's the Black Caucus? No, plan? let me not talk but about what have, the Black but, Caucus. But I don't what care have about we the told the, Listen, what have Thank we told you. the Black Caucus to do? Thank you. Thank you. We haven't and told them to do nothing. I don't, and it, and it, I don't think there's a mechanism. Okay, I, let's calm down. down. Let's one at a time. Foremost, we don't have a mechanism in place to be able to tell the Black Caucus what to do. We have CCN Secondly, news hold, media. Hold, hold on. Secondly, and you and and they just passed the reform bill. Mm -hmm. It is guaranteed that anybody that goes into the penal system that is returned to the area in which they grew up in the crime existed, he's gonna go right back. Uh -huh. Right. We need to be. We need to be sitting at the tables talking about building new systems. Yes. Where you take the people outside of the city they came and give them right. an opportunity to live and see what yeah. life is about. Okay. We, now, is that written? Most no, African no, no. Americans have PTSD, and we now, don't know. We, we grew up a, under pressure. You say we don't now, have a mechanism. We do have a mechanism. We have a. We have an executive order demand. That is a that. I'm not is, saying that. All I, that. I, I, I wasn't that's speaking the, of that. I wasn't. That's I wasn't the, speaking of that. So, I'm just saying, technology wise, as we are, we are behind. We are behind the level. Even in the general assembly, we ju they just voted so that they can vote remotely. I don't know if they've done it in the house yet, but I'm just it. saying. We're going to do it on the tenth. Even on the state level, we're behind. I'm saying in our communities. We're still behind. There are things we need to be advocating for and pushing further because we can't. All we do is get the the project on the table before it get to the middle. We over. We not thinking ten years down the line. So just like this commission for African American men, it should have a what do you call that benchmark? Where we at? What do we need to do? Where we going? What do we this? The really? caucus, it's got the it. caucus it's got should be stepping in step with ideals so that it makes us better. They should be there pushing what we're talking about. So this is a this is a beginning that we can begin some dialogue so we can have opportunities for young men to share with the all men black caucus. Well, they and doing can, something every month with young men across the I, state. Can I, uh, I mean, we, we, we have to think bigger than what we've been thinking. We just in the shell. Yeah. Yes, okay. DJ, go ahead. I want to emphasize that when we say the black, the members of the black caucus should be doing what we uh, need them to do. We, the black caucus is composed of what elected officials, not State selected, elected officials, not State appointed. Elected. We elected, elected them. Right. We vote, they vote for them. And when they run their campaigns, they tell you what they believe in. And if they don't believe in what you believe in, and there's no other candidate that believes in what you believe in, you should not why don't you them. make yourself a, a candidate? Because uh -huh. you have your beliefs. All right. If you, you make yourself a candidate, and there's nobody I, else can I, who represents you. Can I interject? I think that, that stage. I think what you're saying is so true, TJ. But in the meantime, the way that politics work you do have to put the heat behind them. You do have to keep coming. You do, you can't give up. You can't say, well, this is how they believed in the beginning and I'll just leave it alone. You gotta present them with policy, with, with petitions. 
And that's when they know you're serious because they're not going to just say, well, I think they need this and then I'll give it to you. But if we do a campaign and we really need young people like yourself, because they don't want to hear from us all the time and they want to see, well, who's on board with you? So I would just recommend that whatever it is that we're thinking about, that we put some concrete uh, uh, action uh, steps. Uh, planning uh, to it. We've already started planning on the west side with the restoration of Garfield Park because that's the largest mass of land, 180 acres of land that everybody has to come through. And if it is not up to speed and up to par, then the whole west side falls. So we are. They ain't gonna on- let that fall, baby. Trust me, they ain't gonna let that fall. I'm on the I'm on the board, and trust me, it is in bad shape. And what if we to don't. Friends of the park. Well, that's uh, uh, they're downtown. So they've got other, we are the, the advisory council that is supposed to make sure that that park is up to speed. So what we're doing, we're saying to the so administration. Right now, so right now with Congressman Danny Davis being on the Ways and Means Committee, mm-hmm. which is the biggest committee ever that can give you all the money ever, if the if the elected officials in the seventh congressional district don't take that plan to him, it'll never get there. No, but but Thomas say I, I understand that he's already written down as okay. the contract. I'm just saying, we just, just but the thing is, you know what the problem is, is that sometimes when we push things out there and the I's are not dotted and the T's are not crossed, then it gets kicked back. So we want to make sure that then we, we get are, people that know what they're doing at the right. end. That, Write those right. proposals. Right, right. Because listen, we're dealing with the next Zoom. I have one more the meeting. Okay. All I want would like to do, Ms. Carter, is to we could keep this simple. We lay out the challenges of the black community and we okay. make demands All right. for rapid relief. That's it. We can agree on that. We could agree yeah. on that. And and so once and once we get the governor's attention about this. Then we could talk about how much money, one step at a time. But okay. we need him yeah. to admit that it's hard being black, that black people are in trouble, yeah, that. And that the state must help. We don't have to put no dollar amount on the table right now. Okay. That's not necessary. Okay. But we need the message to be that we need help in the black community. So we That's need- why it's called oh. the rap relief. Okay. And can I say that we, uh, can I say that, uh, we do have the governor on tape from the Chicago Communicator News Yes, that he's promised us. He came to us before he became governor. That's right. Made some promises that we have him on film. Yes. And we, need, we need to do to a campaign to push back. that information out there and say, hey, listen, here it is. Let's make some commercials. What, what Let's did he promise? put our own narrative out there. And that's what we yeah. have to do. We have what to use all the medias to push our narrative. He, so promised that, promise? he promised that he was going to work with the African-American community. There it is. Make sure that we got what we needed. All right. And then as a, as a new our media, that should be shared with that's, all the media, a PC, that's PSA, fantastic. whatever. That's adds value to, to this request. That's great. That goes, so <laughs> would, you like, would you like for me to uh, send you that clip? That yes. Clip? You know what? Now that I have this um, connection, I'm glad the tax dollar is on here. I know he works day and night, so we should definitely schedule another one yes. with the group because I know Thomas Say is want to know who else. So we want to be on board with that other. You got LeBette. You together. got you got Cheryl. You got LaShawn. You got everybody. You got TJ. Now TJ is my baddest young student. And oh no, we got the team. Right? So let's get together. I'll try to see if I could get uh, that group to host a meeting. Okay. And we will, that way we can come up with a strategy. And then what you having a tape yeah. saying that he wants to help that that's a whole new campaign look okay. if black people if we get together one day and have a virtual press conference or if we come together it would be great if we could do one with people from all parts of the state just saying laying out the problems in the black that's community. how you win the that's man, how you win right you call your state reps greenwood and greenwood down well, in um mount green let's, let's, let's not name no more let's not name no more state reps Let's I'm just saying, if you people. get areas, that's 
And I said her because they have a black area. So I meant if we look at all of the black I, look, I agree with you. I'm just trying to, right, I know I'm that I've been working at this since June and they haven't came on board. I'm just asking that we could come together as community That's organizers right. like y'all, and we will push the representatives to come and support what we're talking about. Once right. we have people like the NAACP down there in Greenwood's area, and in Peoria. But, but wait a minute. Whoever is leading this committee, that should be the first thing on their list. Every NAACP well, across why, why the Why don't state. you wait and listen and see what they have called? Okay. You will okay. see. They've made calls already. And we already traveled to, we traveled to Greenwood's district and we went to a church. We traveled the state about this. So we wow. will get oh, That's good. Talk. Okay. Yes. Then the we job is almost Debbie done. Turner, Yes, no, but we got to work. So I'm just, I just want you to know that we have been doing it, but it's a promising thing that we are on this call today because a seed has been planted and you guys know about it and you said, let's talk about it. Yes. That's what it's about. That's and, right. and let's, let's, and let's get department. all of these groups, let's get all of these groups so that we are all on the same page. As Thomas A was saying, you know, we can't be over here and be over there because like she was saying, because she's in the loop in Springfield, she should have known. And so we need to make sure we have that network. Yes. And the network is not that it's weak, but it's just not connected. So I think that as we do this connectedness, then we will all be on the same page and and having that unified voice. Thank you. Yeah, Thank when, you. When, when, when Dr. King went to meet with the um, President Lyndon Johnson or Kennedy, he went to meet with them and he didn't talk about Congress. He went out to the street and he went out to get it done with people. Okay. It's people that give you power. Legislators are empowered by people. When you think about the civil rights movement, none of that stuff would have happened if it wasn't for people making it happen. Right. When you think about women rights and movement, we, none of it happened if it wasn't for people. People tell politicians what to do, just like TJ was saying. So we don't have to worry no, about they don't. don't nobody oh, they tell do. you what to do, LaShai. Come on now. I, well, <laughs> can I, you better believe if it. the voice is loud enough, I think they'll listen. They do. They I mean, listen, there's no they way. Look, just think about did. President Obama when he ran for office. He wasn't for gay marriage. He, he changed did. his mind, though, didn't he? That's what That's I'm because telling you. They spoke loud. He spoke loud. Just and, like and DACA. The moment. Just like DACA. Yeah. DACA, the Muslim ban. They they are speaking in huge voices. And we all got this little weak, mitten, little mousy voice. That's what, what, that's kind that's of, what we said. It's, and go back to our time. Room and do it the way I we want used to, to do. Emphasize for all the residents of Chicago. Chicago is actually, if well, many people don't know that, or a lot of people, unless they were living during that time, don't know that Dr. King even came and lived in the city of Chicago. We I have was alive. To, we <laughs> have to understand Chicago is one of the most religiously powerful cities we have uh, chicago has one of the highest uh numbers of religious leaders black religious leaders in the world or in the, at and least they in the united Duke states and we have to tell <laughs> them what we want R chicago religious leaders lead a congregation their congregation then listens to the pastor the pastor is telling them what they need to do so they go and tell their elected officials what they have to do and elected officials, I believe that they have a duty to listen because unless they want to be recalled or uh, not win their election, they would listen. Makes sense. Makes sense. That's, well, a, we're, that's, we're a, that's a really wonderful um, thought. It, yeah, process, but it doesn't really work like that. <laughs> Tell you know, being oh, right. It, we, it, does, it, it, it could work however we make it work. If we unify, America now want to help black people. Exactly. I feel it. We are in the we are in the right moment to just step up and say our kids yes. can no yes. longer be miseducated. Right. Our communities can no longer be underdeveloped and we can no longer allow our kids to drink lead in their water. I mean, there's we can no longer allow our communities to be subpar. Let me tell you, this is our moment. This is right. But when you think about Chicago, District 299, how can District 299 have an 8.1, uh, 
four billion dollar budget, and our children don't have books. Right. Come on now. That makes no damn sense. They've been still in that CPS for years. It starts at the say, top. If, if we, you don't say anything, how are they gonna know your problems? They, they know the problem. Sometimes they, they know, know the problem. problem. But but they know, listen, they also, them on the problem. They also know we're divided. And divided, right. we are conquered. So if we have a unified voice, let's practice Umoja. That's unity in Kwanzaa. Yes. And if we can focus on how to be unified, because That's one it. thing that divides us, sometimes we don't even know what to call ourselves when we're in one room. We are black, melanated, uh, uh, indigenous, uh, African-American. And so if we unify as one voice, then I think that we will be a power to be reckoned with. And so yeah, but the, you know, I, 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 my queen, I hear what you're saying, but what runs deep to me is that not only are we Democrats, and we've been Democrats for 30 some years, and a lot of folks that have been in charge of CPS are black folks. Black folks. And what they and do, same thing that everybody thank else do. Take, take care of each other. And we right. don't and take care of the business. And we've got care. to get that, that listen, dream. we've got to get that group that when we come, they listen. We got to get that group that when we write something, it is taken to the highest level. So we've so got to be that group that when we speak, we are listened to. So well, do we'll you try to get elected school board in Chicago. And I was on the Zoom last week with Senator Peters and uh, Representative Roberts. And we was informed that uh, the leadership, Cunningham, uh, the, the uh, president of the uh, Senate, ma uh, man, uh, out of Old Park, the president. Herman. Herman. They bl the mayor did not want the people of Chicago to have elected school board. <laughs> Again, That's crazy. There is systemic racism. Yes. This I, is that, this is built up over years. Just, this this just, didn't happen yesterday. Yes. I we, we got a battle. Also, so I I think we have a battle. Next, we have a battle, but we've got to be focused. We got will, four minutes. We want it. We got four minutes. We want to close letting the state rep know what our action plan is going to be to assist him in getting to the governor. So we're going to start our letter writing campaigns. We're going to call and we're going to support getting that information out. Okay, we and agree? The petition. And the petition. And the petition. So we all agree. We'll bring yes. our networks oh, in yeah. and we'll start let us not pushing, that, pushing that. Because yes. we want to see the change. We can't forget next yeah. year is also um, one of the landmark years. Next year will be a midterm. And next year will also be a year where representatives are up for re-election. If you're not content with your elected official, even not even winning your election will inform people of a better way. It just have to get your name recognition is better than power or position. Position is just it's just somewhere you sit. You when don't even know, know you young man. In, <laughs> when people know what you believe in, they can adopt young those man. Beliefs. Uh, you need to, <laughs> LaShawn, please wrap your arms around this young man because it's not like that. It's truly not. It's truly not. And I, ma'am, I, I respect you and I completely feel for those who have a very closed minded view on how things will be, are, and can be if we stop saying it's not like that and start saying we want it like that. Oh, okay. So let me say, let me say this to you so you understand. I have been into politics. I started by knocking doors. I've been an election judge. I've been a precinct captain. I've been it all. Everybody that runs for office tell you what they going to do. I'm going to fix education. I'm going to change this. I'm going to do that. You can't do that when you first get here. A state rep is only here one year. You don't know the bathroom, Harley, in one year. Ah. In one year. To be in power takes more than a year, and you need a group of people to carry out your vision 
if it's going to happen. So I'm not be, I, I don't mean to seem like I'm cynical. I understand what you believe because I believe just like you did when I was 16 years old. I said, it's this way, it's this way. And them old politicians say, baby, you ain't even old enough to get in the game. <laughs> However, God has seen me through to be in leadership. So I know when I say what I'm saying is true, I've seen it. I've still worked the battlefields because I believe in my community. So all no. I'm saying is you can't believe in the person that's running for office that because they standing on this platform, that that's what they're going to be able to do. That's not hard work when you get down here, baby. It's really not. Trust and me. Even on the local level, when I first got elected at the age of 23, my mother, I was telling my mother, I want my mother to say, boy, you think you're going to turn the whole world upside down overnight, don't you? <laughs> Didn't work that way. It work don't work that way. No, it don't. don't. No. I understand well, thank that. you all uh, for, for joining. I'm going to have to cut the conversation yeah. short, give the, yeah. step, the last minute to close and uh, give us our marching orders. Can, can Go I ahead, Lisha. I, I thank you all. I think this is great just to have a conversation about uh, Black people and knowing that we're going to have one mission, and that is just to let it be known that we need rapid relief right now. Right now. Black. Right. No, and that's, no that, that's that. a campaign within itself that that's people it. in the committee right. can say. Rapid yeah. relief. That's right. that's right. nice. That's easy. That's it. See, he gave us the clothes, the marching orders. Thank you. Yeah. We appreciate right. it. And we'll be calling you for another. All right. I'll be emailing you about the next yeah. meeting that we're gonna have. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have a great Bye, night. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.